in Kathmandu. But there are growing fears that donations are being squandered uh, by corruption and just uh, the mismanaged and bureaucracy there in Nepal. Lars Koya is the founder of Allied Crowds, an online directory of crowdfunding projects aimed at helping developing countries. Thank you so much for coming in because this whole issue of crowdfunding, uh, we are seeing that becoming increasingly popular, not, not just with Nepal. No, that's right. It's, it's growing at just an amazing rate. It feels almost like the internet 20 years ago, but it's growing about 100% uh, a year in the developing world and elsewhere. Um, in developing world, crowdfunding is now about $500 million a year out of a total in the world of around uh, $15 billion. So it's a, it's a big industry. And why is it so successful uh, as opposed to, to conventional ways mm -hmm. of raising money and aid? Yeah, I think a lot of people feel that there's greater accountability through crowdfunding. If you go on your computer, you see a uh, project that supported school in India or a, a health charity in Nepal, you actually feel that your money goes directly to that charity, not into some great Kafkaesque mass that may or may not do right in the end. Very often does, by the way. But, but crowdfunding feels there's a, a you know, greater engagement and greater accountability. There are so many projects uh, out there. In terms of uh, the money raised for Nepal, just uh, tell me, in this particular way of doing things, mm -hmm. how much has been raised? Because just in researching it today, you can find uh, this way of uh, raising money now with just about everything. There's a doctor trying to raise sure. money for, to uh, test a new drug. There was a photographer trying to raise sure, money to absolutely. go to Afghanistan. Well, What's happening in yeah, Nepal? Yeah, so clearly one of the issues is definition. Like, how do you define crowdfunding? An, an actual list of who is doing what in terms of crowdfunding in Nepal. So we went and shared that with the world, simply put it up on our Facebook page and internet, and we've had about 400,000 hits on that alone. Now, that's interesting because we didn't actually do anything with it or try to make any money from it or anything like that, but there's just an incredible urge for the information. Now, we also put other stuff up yeah, there, like the well, general charities. I mentioned there in the introduction, just in terms of conventional aid, the mm. worries about where it goes. Mm. But in terms of questions for, for this form of funding, mm. there are questions clearly about security. Sure. People will say, well, look, if I, how do I know that that's mm. a genuine sign mm. the money is going to go mm. where it says it's going to mm. go? What, what is the answer to that? Well, clearly, in any industry with 180 platforms, just an hour part of it, there is a risk of fraud. Like, there isn't general aid in anything. I think the fact that you know exactly where your money is going or supposed to go, it makes it easier to make sure that it actually ends up there. And there's a feedback loop where you hear back from the projects how things went, and that in turn will impact your ability and, and willingness to donate in the future. Okay. So clearly the, the platforms are the gatekeepers, right? So if you have a, a, a major platform saying what we say on the website or on your mobile is actually true and it's not, then the accountability falls to them. And that's important. We can do various things to test that, and we do. Um, but clearly, a platform that's not doing what it says on the tin is going to be in trouble. Well, perhaps in the coming months, you'll come back and uh, let us know how some of those projects are actually getting on. But Absolutely, I'd like that. So much for coming in and talking <laughs> to us. Thank you. Now.